Welcome to our St John's Church online service. I especially want to welcome anyone new or who has not been a regular member of our church in the past. I hope you feel fully part of this online worshipping community today and that you find you can meet with God through this service. We put this service together so that we can encounter God and be equipped and encouraged and envisioned for the weeks ahead so we can follow Jesus, love people and transform the world we live in. Today, Tim Solosi, one of our curates, will be introducing our June series on the fruits of the Holy Spirit, speaking on the battle in the heart. I wanted to let you know that our St John's Church Kids Service is available on our YouTube channel right now. Do check it out and share it on social media. So let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit. And as we worship you, set our hearts on fire with love for you and for the world around us. Amen. Hi guys, I'm Adam. And I'm Emily. And hi, I'm Kerry. And hello, I'm Kelvin. And we are the, the Tuckwell Tuck family. family. Hello and good morning, everybody. And you might recognise us from church on a Sunday morning. We can normally be found at the 10.30 service. And Kelvin and I sometimes serve on the welcome team. And Emily and Adam usually go to the kids' church. Very fun, worth trying. <laughs> so Kerry and I are both key workers. I work within the fire service and Kerry works at the local school. And we've both been working during lockdown. During lockdown has been a really good opportunity though for us to spend time as a family to go for walks, to do lots of stuff in the garden, to go for bike rides, obviously to do the school homework and... Also, sometimes even getting on each other's nerves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just, uh, just, just a, a little tiny bit. bit. <laughs> and um, I've been missing school and uh, I've been missing my friends and family and my clubs, which are football and swimming, obviously. And <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, basically the same as Adam. Um, missing my clubs, um, swimming and football as well. Um, missing my family, seeing my family and friends and just looking forward to seeing them after this big um, lockdown break. Yeah, yeah, it's been difficult, isn't it, at times? I think we're all looking forward to some bits of that. Yeah. <laughs> so some yeah. of you children that are watching might have been going into school whilst we've been in lockdown. Some of you might have started back this week and some of you might be going back in the next few weeks. Um, so we thought it'd be really nice to ask people to pray for children that are going back to school and going back to nursery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also to pray for the staff that are working in those schools and nurseries mm -hmm. that mean they can open. And then also please pray for children that are um, still going to be at home, doing their homeschooling, and obviously the parents that are there supporting that homeschooling. Yeah, yeah so lastly we'd just like to send you all our love and say a big goodbye from... The Tuckwell family! Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me King
One of the things I love about being a follower of Jesus is that God loves me and forgives me and helps me to live for him. Coming to God with an apologetic heart is so important and knowing that you're forgiven is so freeing. So just take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to shine his light into your life now. I'm sure you've been horrified as I have by the pictures from the US of George Floyd's violent arrest, which led to his death. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby said, white Christians should repent of our own prejudices and do the urgent work of becoming better allies to our brothers and sisters of color. So let's take a moment to be quiet and spend some time getting right with God with a simple prayer of confession from Psalm 51. Why don't you repeat each line after me? Lord God, we've sinned against you. We've done evil in your sight. We're sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Humans are difficult. I suppose you may know some difficult humans. We're creatures with instincts, with the desires, with desires and needs and wants, and a want to survive and thrive. But we are more than just creatures. We are created, but humans are different from the rest of creation and other creatures. We have a godlike quality, and what this is called in the Bible is bearing the image of God. Now, having a godlike quality and being something created by God seems to be quite impossible, but that's exactly where humans are. We bear the image of God. All humans do. Humans bear the image of God in Genesis 2. The word is pneuma in the Greek or neshama in the Hebrew in the Old Testament. And that word translates as either breath or spirit or wind and when God breathes into the nostrils of the first humans. Is he just breathing into that, or is there also that poetic understanding that he is putting his spirit in them, that there is something different about humans compared to the other animals of the world? I did have another animal with me over my shoulder, but she's wandered off now. That was Betsy the dog, by the way. Now, this same word for breath or spirit, or wind, is used as spirit, and usually translated as spirit in Job 26, verse 4. In Job 32, verse 8, there's a reference to said breath, or spirit, giving understanding. In that case, I feel like the word spirit makes more sense, that the spirit gives understanding rather than just breath, or wind giving understanding. In Isaiah 42, 5, God gives breath and life. God gives spirit and life. Now, both of these make sense. This is really good poetic understanding of one word with more than one meaning, and both of those meanings making sense. Now, it doesn't make complete sense, though, if you go with that third meaning of wind. If God gives wind and life, then I'm going to worry a little bit more about things. But we know that the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost like a rushing wind, and so... At Pentecost, you can start to understand that reference of the wind of the Holy Spirit, not just as a dove, not just as a tongue of fire, but the wind also being spirit and breath, and that relating back to Genesis. So being made in the image of God in Genesis 1 gives us an understanding that we are creatures. We are created, but it also means that we bear the image of God, and so we have two natures, and these two natures are often contrasting with each other. They are often in disparity and conflict with each other. 
it's much of the things that we wrestle about within life are because these two things are at odds with each other. So we have these two natures. We have a creaturely nature, a nature of the flesh, and, nature, and a second nature, a nature of the spirit. And yes, as I said, Betsy is a creature. She's a dog. She has breath. So do badgers and larks and lambs and sloth and carp and anchovies and orangutans. But what sets us apart from the other animals of the world and the other things of this world is that we've been sent to look after this world and those things as some sort of gardeners, as caretakers, as stewards. But also that we're not doing this alone. We are doing this with God. And we are doing this and what's setting us apart is having some godlike qualities. What's putting us above those things is having some godlike qualities and those godlike qualities are being filled with the spirit. And so I believe that all humans bear the image of God and have that that hint of a spirit with them. But there's a difference between breathing shallow and taking really deep breaths. And so often what we mean at Pentecost is that people were filled to overflowing with the breath of God, with the spirit of God. What's more is that we are free to choose between those two natures and that is one of the more difficult parts of life that we get to choose between the creaturely, between the flesh, between the instincts and between the godly, the spirit, love. And so as we look at this Bible passage, I'd love you to bear those things in mind. The reading is taken from St Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness and orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord. So it's about the flesh and the Spirit. We have two natures and we are being invited and encouraged quite strongly to live by the spirit and not by the flesh, to be guided by the spirit. Now, something clever Paul's doing in the writing there by using the word flesh and by saying that we reject our flesh is talking about circumcision. Now, before we go too far with that, this is the Old Testament law. It is the Old Testament way that you make a covenant with God and you sign up to that. And what he's saying is you're not qualified or disqualified by circumcision. It doesn't matter about your race. God is inviting you into a relationship with him. You don't have to be Jewish. And he's also saying it doesn't disqualify you. You can be Jewish and still have a relationship with God. He's also saying that it doesn't matter about what you've done with your body previously. It's not about a list of good deeds or bad deeds. And in particular to that context, it's not about whether you've had involvement in pagan or occult things, uh, which I know may not be relevant to much of the church. And maybe they're not part of some Roman or Greek god cult. Um, but nonetheless, it's still encouraging to hear that, that when you give your life to Christ, you get a fresh start, but you discover some kind of freedom in Christ and you can be guided by the Spirit regardless of what's happened previously. And this is being written by Paul, who was previously named Saul, who murdered Christians. So it's a check he can write with some integrity to say that this is how it is and this is the promise for you. You have a new promise, a new life in Christ, and to be guided by the Spirit, not by the fleshly, creaturely things. 
So we have these two natures and we are invited to choose the nature of God, to choose the spirit. Now, a weird analogy is fancy Victorian buildings. They all used to have these giant wrought island railings around them. So you couldn't really see them to keep out people and uh, to protect those big Victorian investments. Now, during the Second World War, most of the railings were ripped down and turned into armaments. And without railings, people went and used the green spaces in front of them. They leant up against them. They started sticking chewing gum in the corners of the buildings and uh, in some cases misusing them, in some cases using them quite well. And so in some cases, they had to put back some railings, maybe not as tall as they were so people could see the building and admire how beautiful that Victorian dome stonework is. I don't know too much about these things. But in some cases they didn't put back railings and you could still go and sit on the grass and picnic and things. And it depended on what people did with that freedom that they had. So that's a question that we've got to handle and we've got to deal with with ourselves is what freedom have we got and you know, what does that mean? Because we are free to do whatever we like. We can engage in the list of stuff that it says not to do. But we have to deal with the consequences. And we're responsible for stuff. We're responsible of this world. We're responsible for the world. And we have some responsibility over our relations with our neighbours. And what that means. So we've got these two natures that we get to choose between. We get to choose where we put those railings. Where is it that we're going to stop and say, you know what, that's too far. So one nature is the flesh, but the opposing nature is the spirit and godly behaviour. And we get some suggestions of what godly behaviour could be here. And the image of God driving our personality and character is something that we can take and we can run with in verse 17. The desires of the flesh and spirit are against each other. Here, there's an opportunity to address, address and empathise with the things that we struggle with and why we struggle. There is a spiritual battle in the heart of every person. Just choosing where we put the railings. Where is too far? Where did we go too far? Where do we need to put something in check? I'm kind of straying into the realm of self-control, which is one of the things that's mentioned here as a fruit of the spirit. And so these godly behaviours, these godly personality traits or things that you find in people's characters are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I wanted to read them to make sure I didn't miss any out. And they are all fantastic. And so I believe that we can be filled with the Spirit and filled to overflowing as what we see happened at Pentecost. But I also believe from Genesis that this is a result of having the image of God and to bear the image of God. That we have some trait of this just sitting and simmering. It's the difference between taking shallow breaths and then God breathing into us and giving us great big deep breaths. And so for some people they don't know God. They don't have a relationship with Jesus that they know about, but I believe that God is still interacting with them and God is still blessing them and the spirit is still present with them in some small way because they bear the image of God and that's what humans are. That's what humans are created to be. And so if you know someone with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, and maybe God is at work in their life in a way that they don't even realise. And I think that's really encouraging that we can discover what God's already doing in the lives of people who don't know him yet. I just lost my place. So now you have freedom in Christ to choose a spirit-filled life. And really what all of this is driving at, what the end point of this is coming back to, at least for me, is the greatest commandment. Which is to love your neighbour as yourself and to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and strength. Now, this week's talk could have been focused a lot more on the fruits of the spirit. But over the next few weeks, we're going to focus on them and we're going to work out some things about them and what they look like and what the Bible teaches about them. But I just wanted to give us this framework this context from where the fruits of the spirit are first introduced to us 
clearly in Galatians. And so the end point of this and what this is all driving at is to love your neighbour as yourself. It's about choosing selfless love over the selfish things. And for me, this has been really difficult because as much as I've managed to work out some some good habits to realise what's bad about myself previously and work through those some of these things, this lockdown has been a new situation for me and I realise I've become grouchy and ratty and shorter tempered than usual. And not just because I'm confined inside in a house, but also because these are some of my bad behaviours, some of my creaturely habits or urges that aren't being satisfied because I can't just go out and see people as I'd like to. I think it's good to see people, but it's been difficult and I've had to sit and work out actually how do I act? How do I work these things through? Where do I find God in these things? Where where is God speaking to me? How do I be guided by the Spirit in lockdown? It's a difficult question. And so I'm just going to finish by repeating that same thing again. Love your neighbour as yourself. Amen. Okay, so I left this out of the main talk because I thought it detracted from the main points and was a bit of a tangent. And it is and it does. Because it's a huge thing. But I think it's worth saying very clearly that racism is a sin. And it's there very subtly in the talk, but it's worth saying very clearly that racism is a sin. And if you love your neighbour as yourself, then there's no space for prejudice. But also, if humans bear the image of God, that racism isn't just sinning against your fellow neighbour, it's also sinning against God. And just one last thing, it's worth saying that peace, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that we are going to be focusing on, it's not just some kind of serene, laid back beach situation. It's not even just a lack of conflict. What it is, is a lack of injustice. And I know that kind of destroys that uh, well put together ending that links over to with whatever Andy's going to say next. I just thought it was worth saying very clearly that racism is a sin. And we need to pray for all that's happening in the world. And on the day that I'm filming this, there have been some developments and I don't know what things are going to be like by Sunday. Hopefully better. But it still exists and it still exists even in this country. Usually in a more subtle way, but it's definitely there. We need to stand against it. As we respond to Tim's sermon today, the two questions we ask ourselves is, what is God saying to me and what am I going to do about it? Have a think now. I want to invite the Holy Spirit to come now. speak to us and to encourage us to change sitting position perhaps as we prepare to wait on the Holy Spirit. Let's close our eyes and perhaps open our hands as we would in our gatherings together. Let's welcome the presence of God. Let's wait for a few moments that we might experience his love, his presence, his power, his healing. I invite you to be open to God. Ask the Holy Spirit what he might want to say to you today. What do you want to say to him? What's 
the Holy Spirit what he might want to say through you to someone else in the days to come. So somebody's calling you to get in contact with in this week to come. So come Holy Spirit and bring healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song celebrating God's reckless and costly love for us and acknowledge the call to love selflessly those around us as God leads us. So that's sing, reckless love. I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind.
now we come to our prayers. There are four areas in which I'd like to lead us to pray into today. In each case, I shall give you a theme and I'll encourage you to take a few moments to write down a prayer during that pause. Get an A4 piece of paper and fold it into quarters to aid you. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, in response to events in the US, I echo the Archbishop's words in saying that recent events in the US have once again drawn public attention to the ongoing evil of white supremacy. Systemic racism continues to cause incalculable harm across the world. And our hearts weep for the suffering caused, for those who've lost their lives, for those who've experienced persecution, those who live in fear. God's justice and love for all creation demands that this evil is properly confronted and tackled. So let's be clear. Racism is an affront to God. It is born out of ignorance and must be eradicated. We all bear the responsibility and must play our part to eliminate this scourge on humanity. And we pray that God's abounding wisdom, compassion and love will guide leaders across the world to forge a better society. Let's respond by writing or drawing our prayer to God. Secondly, we pray for an end to the COVID-19 crisis and the production of a vaccine. Let's again respond by writing or drawing our prayer to God. Thirdly, let's write the names of the five people that we are praying for that don't yet have a relationship with God. And as we write them, let's pray for them. And lastly, today is a day of prayer in Chelmsford Diocese for the selection of a new Bishop of Chelmsford. So let's pray for the life of our great and diverse diocese and for all the communities we seek to serve. From Clacton-on-Sea to Canning Town, from Southend to Saffron, Walden and all those places in between. Let's pray for a deepening of our love for God and of our service in God's world. Let's pray for our church communities and all the places where God's people gather. And let's pray for God's provision of wisdom and discernment and care for all those responsible for calling the 11th Bishop of Chelmsford. And of course, we pray for those God is preparing to respond to that call. Let's respond by writing or drawing our prayer to God. Amen. Well, I want to remind you that we have another Sunday prayer and teaching Zoom gathering today at 6.30pm and our church Zoom prayer gathering on Thursday, the 11th of June at 7pm. Do look out for joining details in the St John's weekly news email. And also look out for other prayer gatherings in the coming weeks. As we come to the end of our online service this week, I'd like to say that if you are new to St John's, you are really welcome. We'll be here at the same time each Sunday. In the meantime, if you are new, I'd love to hear from you by email. I'd especially like to know how you came to join our service today and whether we can help you further on your spiritual journey in these unusual times. Just drop me, Andy, an email at office at stjohnscolchester.org.uk and I or one of the team will respond to you. Well, today we're going to enjoy the blessing being sung to us in the recently recorded British Sign Language recording of that blessing, facilitated by a member of our church community. 
So do enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this service with those whom you are praying for. Have a really good week. from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand Generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you.
inside.